Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's look at set matrix zeros. We are given an M by N matrix and we wanna go through every element. If we see that an element is zero, we're gonna set the entire row and the entire column to zero. So for example, we're given a grid, there's only one zero, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna set everything in the column to zero, we're gonna set everything in the row to zero, and then we see the output is exactly that, right? We got some zeros, and then this is going to be our output. And as you can see, there's a bunch of ways to solve this problem with better and better complexities. So I'm gonna show you the like bad solutions and then show you how you can use that to get the best solution because it's actually pretty intuitive. So first, let's say that this is our input array and we declare a copy of that array a copy of that matrix, right? So then we can, what we can do is go through every position, right? So the first one is a one, so we don't have to do anything. Then we get a zero. What does that tell us? That tells us that the entire column is going to be set to zero and the row is going to be set to zero. So why can't we just do that in place? Like why can't I just put a zero here and then a zero here and now a zero here, right? Because because there, there's actually a good reason because so far we've checked off these spots. We checked off this spot. Now we're over here, right? But we replaced that one with a zero now. So now we're going to end up making this a zero and this a zero, but that's not really what we want to do. And that's the reason why we start off with a copy. So when we make changes, we're going to make changes to our copy and when we read the values, we're gonna read from our input. So remember, we did see a zero over here. So in the copy, we are gonna update the entire row. So this is gonna be a zero, this is gonna be a zero. So every value in the row, but we also have to do the column. We see this is already a zero, but this is gonna be changed. So now we made changes to the copy. So this is a zero, but we see that this is still a one, right? Because, because now when we go to the next position, which is this, we see it's a one. So we don't actually have to modify this column and this row, right? Because we haven't even read this value yet. And now we're just gonna continue. So this is the next position in our matrix. It's a one, so we don't have to do anything and this is the next one. It's a zero, so it's time to set the entire column to zero and set the entire row to zero. So in our copy, we see that we actually already did this column. So this is kind of an example of the repeated work that we're having to do, right? It kind of shows you that maybe having a copy is not the best solution but we still need to update the row. So we're gonna change this to a zero and we're gonna change this to a zero. So next we go to this position, it's a one. We don't have to do anything. And then we go to the next position. This is a zero, so it's time to make some changes. We're gonna set the entire column to zero and we're gonna set the entire row to zero in our copy. So we see that this is already a zero so this is the only other value in the output that needs to be changed to zero. And we see that the column has already been set to zero. So clearly having a copy of the input array takes M by N memory, and it's also not the most time efficient algorithm either. So how can we do better? We're noticing for every single cell in our input, we're potentially having to update an entire row and an entire column. Can we prevent this repeated work? Yes, I'm going to show you how. So we see that we actually have a fixed amount of rows, right? Let's call that M. We have a fixed amount of columns N. So worst case scenario, all we're going to have to do is make sure that every row is set to zero and then every column is set to zero. So as we iterate through every single value in our input, let's not update the copy. We actually don't 
need the copy. We need less memory. We can have one array for the number of columns and one array for the number of rows and then we can mark these whether we want to fill in zeros or not and then at the end we can actually fill in the zeros in our input array without even needing a copy. So let me show you this algorithm. So we have a one, so we don't have to do anything. So this empty indicates that we don't have to uh, zero the row or the column. Next, we see a zero. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna say, okay, in this column, we're gonna fill it we're gonna fill it with zero. So this is some work that we have to do. In this row, we are going to fill it with zeros, but we're not gonna do it yet because we don't wanna overwrite this value that we haven't even visited yet. And we definitely don't wanna overwrite this value yet, which we haven't visited yet. Next, we go to this position. It's a one, so we don't have to do anything. This is also a one. This is a zero, so technically we have to mark this spot, but we already did that. We already know this column's gonna be set to zero, but we wanna say that this row needs to be set to zero. We're not gonna fill the zeros yet, but we're definitely gonna mark it. So this is a one, we don't do anything. This is a zero. We know that this column has to be set to zero, and this row has to be set to zero. Now, technically, we see that every row is going to be set to zero. So, so therefore, like the entire matrix is just going to be zero, but we're still going to continue our algorithm. So this is a one, we don't have to do anything. This is a one, we don't have to do anything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this memory and it's going to tell us which columns need to be set to zero. So we see the first column does need to be set to zero. We're going to do that. The second column needs to be set to zero. We're going to do that. The third column does not need to be set to zero. Next, we look at the rows. The first row needs to be set to zero. We mostly already did that, but don't forget about this one. The second row is gonna be set to zero. The third row is gonna be set to zero. And obviously the entire matrix is now zero, but the advantage of this is the memory we used we didn't need to create an entire copy. We just needed two arrays. So the memory complexity is actually big O M plus N, where these are the dimensions. The time complexity is M by N because we're really just iterating over the entire matrix at most three times. One where we iterate through every position, one where we fill in the columns, and another time where we fill in the rows. And I didn't tell you the time complexity of this one, but it is actually greater than the time complexity of this. So this is actually a better time solution and a better memory solution. Now, my only question is, can we get a O of one memory solution? We know the time, the best time complexity we can do is M by N because we do have to iterate through every single position in the matrix but we can save some space. Is it possible? Yes, I'm gonna show you how. Is there a way where we can take this array and put it into the matrix so we're, we can do this in place? Is that possible if I put that over here? Is it possible for us to take this uh, array and put it in to our matrix? The answer is yes, we can take these two arrays that we have and put them in our matrix. So we do this in place with O of one memory, but you see just one problem, right? Just one little problem. Notice how this position is overlapping. The two arrays are overlapping in this position. So we, we do need a tiny bit more memory. We just need one more uh, cell, right? We just need one more variable, but we know that that's still big O of one. So I'm actually for the purple one, which tells us which rows we need to zero, I'm going to have it be one less. We don't want them to overlap. So we can get rid of this. We don't actually need the extra memory from these input arrays. 
We don't need this extra memory, but we do need this one single last cell because we see that there's no room for it over here. The green one took that from us. So you can see this is big O of one memory, right? We're just using one extra cell that's constant memory. And so this is gonna tell us uh, whether we need to zero out the first row or not. So now we're just gonna run through the matrix for the third and last time. So this is a one, we don't have to do anything. This is a zero, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna mark this cell, and how are we gonna mark it? Well, we're gonna set this to zero, which it already is, right? And we're gonna set this to zero, indicating that this row needs to be zeroed out. This zero tells us that this column needs to be zeroed out. Next, we go to this cell. It's a one, great, we don't have to do anything. This is a one, great, we don't have to do anything. This is a zero, so what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna set this cell to zero to indicate that this column needs to be zeroed out, but it's already zero, good for us. But we also need to set this to zero to tell us that this row needs to be zeroed out. And you see why this solution works, right? So now we're gonna set this to zero and that's okay for us because we already visited that cell. We already saw that it initially had a one so we can overwrite it. We're allowed to do that. The reason this works is we start at the top left over here and then work our way down, right? We start here and work our way top to bottom, left to right. So now we visit this cell, it's a one, nothing to do. We visit this zero, so we got, we got some work to do. We need to set this top value to zero to indicate that this column needs to be zeroed out. And we need to set this position to zero to indicate that the row needs to be zeroed out, but it's already zero, which is good for us. So now we get a one, nothing to do. We get another one, nothing to do. Okay, so now that we know we know which rows we need to zero out and we know which columns we have to zero out, so all we have to do is fill in those zeros. So we start we start here. We know this entire column needs to be zero. It already is. We know this column needs to be zero. It mostly is. We just have to change this last value. This is a one, so we don't have to zero out this column. Next, let's go through the rows. So this row needs to be zeroed out, so we can change this to a zero. This row needs to be zeroed out, so we can change this to a zero. The third row also needs to be zeroed out, so we can change this to a zero. Now the entire thing is zero, which is the result that we expected, but the good thing about this solution is we did it in place. All we really needed was one extra variable. So with all that being said, let's finally write the big O of one memory solution. So the first thing I'm just gonna do is get the number of rows and columns and put them in some variables so we don't have to keep computing that. We can get the length of the matrix and get the length of the first row of the matrix, which tells us the number of columns. Remember, we don't need extra arrays, but we just need one extra variable to tell us if the first row is zero or not. So initially, I'm gonna set this to false to say that the first row is not zero, but we'll update it to true if we need to. So remember that the first thing we wanna know is determine which rows and columns need to be zeroed. So we can iterate through every position in our cell. So we're gonna go through every row and we're gonna go through every column. If we ever find a value that is zero, in this case, what we so if we find a zero, what are we gonna do? We're gonna set the first row, so row zero, in this column, we're gonna set that value to zero. What we also want to do is in the first column, so column is zero, we wanna set that row position to zero as well, but just one catch, we cannot set that for the top leftmost position, so only we're only gonna do this if row is greater than zero, because remember, for row zero, we actually have a dedicated value, so 
if row zero is greater than zero, then we do this. But otherwise, we're going to actually update this value, our Boolean. So we're going to set that to true. And so that's it. We're just marking which rows and columns to zero out. So now the way I'm actually going to zero them out is going to be a little bit different than how I showed in the picture. I'm actually going to go through every position one more time. So every uh, row column pair and I'm going to check for each position. So for this row column pair is the do we need to zero it out and how do we know if we're going to zero it out? Well, see up here, we would set the first row to zero. So if the first row value is zero, that means that we're going to zero this out. But also if the column is zero, so if matrix of the first column of this row is equal to zero, then in either of these cases, we want to set the current position that we're at to zero. And so we cannot actually just do this by iterating through every row column. We have to actually skip the first row and we have to skip the first column because we're going to handle that after. So now that we zeroed out the main part of our matrix, we can potentially zero out the first row and the first column if we need to. So for, we're going to check if the origin of our matrix is zero. So remember the first row of the matrix tells us which columns we can zero out. So if this is equal to zero, that means we can set every value. We can set every value in our matrix in the first column. So I'm going to say column is zero. So if the first column in the first row is zero, then every value so what we're doing here is basically zeroing out the first column of our matrix. And last but not least, we have to take a look at our last uh, variable that we declared. So row zero, this tells us if we're going to zero out the first row. So if row zero is true, meaning we have to zero out the first row, we're going to go through every value in the first row and zero it out. So matrix of the first row, row index zero, and every position in that row, we're gonna zero it out. So that's the algorithm. First, we determine which rows and columns to zero out. Then we zero out most of them. Then we zero out the first column if we need to. And lastly, we zero out the first row if we need to. And we don't have to return anything because we did this in place, which is what the problem wanted us to do. Okay, I'm so dumb. I don't know why I didn't finish this line of code. Don't forget to put this to zero.